what you're looking at here, I, I showed you earlier how we draw atoms. We draw atoms by first putting in how many protons and neutrons and then how many electrons. So this has two, two, two. The element with an atomic number of two has a chemical shorthand abbreviation of He, which stands for helium. So this is how you would draw a helium atom. What you're seeing in your handout is a complex molecule. Now remember, all compounds are molecules, that's why it's okay to call this a molecule, but not all molecules are compounds. Um, because, for example, hydrogen, H2, is a molecule, but it's not a compound because it's only made up of hydrogen. So, the way chemists draw the atoms, for example, you've got a C and another C. What element is a C? Carbon. 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 Do you remember what Na is in NaCl or sodium chloride? Nasal. <laughs> no. Well, the NaCl is sodium chloride, which is the fancy chemical name for salt. But do you remember the Na is sodium? Oh. oh that's so what I'm about to show you has carbon atoms, sodium, hydrogen, and oxygens. And look at the way it's arranged. It's kind of like a honeycomb or a hexa hexagon shape. We find a lot of these beautiful shapes in nature. But this has a um, name, Insta Snow. So I'm going to put a little bit of Insta Snow in a beaker. Um, and I'm going to put what you add to it is water. Oh, you have a sink, it works. It's so awesome. right now, I've got a little bit of white powder in there. It's going to turn oh. into snow and explode. Oh. Which is literally called sodium polyacrylate. And when you add water to it... It expands. Wait, can we whoa, have whoa. All it does is expand. Is there a chemical reaction happening? No. Yes. 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 Can we get yes. to do this? Yes. No. Oh. No, no. This is an example of another uh, physical reaction. There's a difference between physical and chemical. So all it did was expand. Chemical and, is like an explosion. Uh, now, now this stuff you can buy in a store, so it's non-toxic. Of course, if, if it's for kids, it has to be non-toxic. Yeah. Um, can you eat it and die? Can we here's eat what's it? happening. <laughs> because of this shape, of the molecules, what this thing does really well is absorb water. And it absorbs water so to where a little bit of water made a little bit of this expand. So that's known as a physical change. Physical change means it went from smaller and dry to expanded because it's holding in the water. It literally holds in H2O water molecules in between all these chains of sodium polyacrylate. So this was an example of a physical change. I'm going to be on more of it. Now I'm going to show you an example of a chemical change that you're probably familiar with. Those are chemical reactions, like an explosion. I love those. Is that diet tonic water? Oh, I love vinegar. I love vinegar. I love vinegar. Water is my favorite. So, this one we're going to find on your first page. On it. Hey. This is one that many of you have probably done at home. It's like literally on the front of when the When you take an acid, so somebody notice I keep acid in the acid storage. Well, the most powerful acid uh, I, I keep is vinegar. Oh. So, this is an acid. It's not very powerful. It is called acetic acid. Why is okay. it going on the edges? So check it out. Acetic acid is the CH3 CO COOH. CH3 CO. That is the chemical uh, 
molecule of acetic acid, otherwise known as vinegar. Now, vinegar has a pretty low pH, so it, it is a pretty strong acid. If you've ever eaten a salad with vinegar and had a cut in your mouth, you felt it. Oh, yeah, I think. Yeah, and you might Why would you have vinegar in your mouth? mouth. Now, here's sodium again. You see the Na? Yeah. Holy moly, this sodium shows up in a bunch of stuff. Baking soda. Just drop the mouse. Uh, baking soda is the, the common name for sodium bicarbonate. Well, when you mix baking soda with vinegar, it does more than just a physical reaction. The, the molecules, they trade atoms, and that's what you call a chemical reaction. So if you look on your paper, NaHCO3 combine with CH3COOH change form and they give you CO2. Ooh, isn't that carbon dioxide? Yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. I'm sorry, but I'm going to make more carbon dioxide. No! I get it! No! Plus, H2O, isn't that water? Yeah. Okay, I'm going to make water, water too. That's a good thing. You know what? You're going to make water. But here's the other thing I'm making. NaCH3COO. This is a sodium uh, uh, compound that's not safe, so we don't drink this stuff even though it's carbon dioxide and water. Why can't we drink it? Now, when we mix these, you can tell it's a chemical reaction because it does more than just expand or dissolve. It explodes. What's happening here? It's, it's exploding. exploding. It's foaming. So what's your evidence of a chemical reaction? Uh, I it's bubbling. It's releasing. It's bubbling. That's Bring the carbon dioxide gas. Yes. Okay. Now. It's so and it's finishing. Oh, it finished. You can it's hear it fizzing. It's pretty white. Right. So what's left it. behind is the water oh, and that white. sodium. White. I think it's. I what it's sodium acrylide or something like, it, it's like just that. Foam. But the gas all escaped really quickly, and um, now it's gone. Bye. Bye. But Don't watch what happens done. if I add something a little different. I know. Okay, so I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to add my vinegar, my weak acid. I love vinegar. What about what? weak acid? Maybe put like actual acid in it. This is actual acid. Yeah, but, but like, it's like acid, acid that, that like But I'm going to add liquid soap. Oh. Liquid soap. Why am I adding liquid soap? Because it's creamy. It explodes. Or it's creamy. Ah, yes. Here's what the liquid soap does. I said it because it's creamy. The liquid soap keeps the bubbles, the gas, the carbon dioxide. It keeps it from escaping. So it literally holds it in place. And it should expand and make something a little cooler to look at. What about? It's, it's rising. Because so, look at it. <laughs> that's really creamy. Really it is literally what? being sped. No. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> what? Why would you say that? What does that mean? I'm um, spreading the Hold on, hold on. It's, is that a put down in any way? Yeah. No. no. Okay, I just want to make sure because if you're being derogatory, you, you know that's wrong, right? Okay, good. In the middle, the so look what happened. happened. What's creamy. the difference between this one and the last one? <laughs> it's it's it creamy. Creamy. so creamy. It's so creamy. It's 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 creamy. So what you're seeing here is the carbon dioxide gas is trying to escape, but the soap is literally keeping it in place. So instead of just the other one, all it did was the gas escaped and then it stopped bubbling. This one, it stays together because of the soap.
touch it? No. No. Why? Sorry, that's a chemical reaction. Chemical reaction because atoms changed from one from the vinegar and the baking soda. They traded different atoms and made different substances. So to review, Insta Snow. All I have is that polyacrylate, sodium polyacrylate, with water. Once the water evaporates, it's still water. The sodium polyacrylate will still be sodium polyacrylate. So this is a physical uh, change. This one is a chemical reaction because they traded atoms. So now let's look at a more fun one. I know, oh, no, our table. Yeah. All right, so go to the page that says elephant toothpaste. All right, a little bit of vocabulary first when it comes to chemical reactions. When two substances combine, if they trade atoms to make something different, that's a chemical reaction. It takes energy for that to happen. Oh no! Now in some things, the energy is released as heat. So right now, make sure that's unplugged. Room temperature is at about 71 degrees Fahrenheit. All right. Um, these are both at room temperature because I did not refrigerate them. We're going to see if there is a release of heat energy when the chemical reaction happens. What did you just That is known as exothermic. Heat comes out. If heat goes in and makes the surrounding cold, that's the opposite, and that's known as an endothermic, like ice melting. Of course, ice melting is just a physical change. It is not a chemical reaction. So if you look at the next page, what you're going to see here is a little different than what happened here. We're going to use um, hydrogen peroxide, but this is stronger than the stuff you get at home. The stuff you get at home is a 3% solution that they sell at the stores. This one is a 30% solution. Oh, so if, if, if you do this at home, you'll get a less uh, strong reaction. I'm going to go by that. I want to see something explode. I do too. Explode. explode. <laughs> and uh, the reason I'm not having everyone use this hydrogen peroxide is because this is strong enough that it will burn your skin. Burn now, my skin. if you were to do this at home with 3% hydrogen peroxide, you would need something to do a chemical reaction. Hydrogen peroxide is really close to water. It is H2O2. If you add one oxygen atom to water, you get hydrogen peroxide. But here's what happens. If you get rid of that extra oxygen, you are left with water plus oxygens that go out into the atmosphere. So I'm going to make oxygen too. I made carbon dioxide, but I'm going to balance that by making some oxygen for you right now. We're saving the planet, boys. I know, I got, I got a balance. Now, here's the thing. David Dobbin really saved the world. If this, if this stuff were unstable, it would do this chemical change on its own, but it can't. It's a stable solution. So I need to add what's known in chemistry as a catalyst. Catalyst? A catalyst is something that can fit perfectly into this and split it apart. It will really make the chemical reaction happen quickly, where if you leave hydrogen peroxide on its own, it'll take a long time for that hydrogen uh, dioxide, which is water, to split from the extra oxygen. So, I'm going to put some soap in there because we don't want the gas, the oxygen gas just escaping. That stuff is exciting. So I'm going to put some... Wait, is it going to explode? No. I don't know. Let's find out. Turn it on! 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 Turn
in the white tree. It's a blue tree. Don't get blue color, so it looks different. No. Yeah, but it's Smurf cream. Smurf cream. Smurf cream. Smurf cream. Smurf cream. Smurf cream. Shut up, she blocked up. Why are you guys so obsessed with cream? Because I like ice cream. Why Smurf cream? That's ice. That's going to be some really cool. Like if you look up how to do this at home, they will tell you to use yeast as a catalyst. Wait, yeast? I'm using another chemical that's also not right, sold uh, this way uh, in stores. It's potassium iodide. Potassium iodide is... Now, it's a little different than the one here. So I need something to force this to do this. And what I'm going to use is K for potassium, I for iodide, O4. I think it's O4 or O3. I forget. M Mr. G, what did you say? Uh, Guys, actually get out and What did you say? Did you say yes or something? What did you say? Yeast. That's a like top one. I thought you said pop. Yesterday it didn't go that far, but you never know. Today I added a little more. Don't tell the other people. I'm going to tell I'm going to tell Are you ready? It's at 174 degrees. What? It's hot. It's hot. hot. It's hot. It's burning. It's I want to be too close. Yeah. Well, I want to be too close. You can't touch it. This is why you Mr. don't G, touch it. Mr. G, Two Face can be a real person. Yeah. Yeah. No. It went from Shrek. This is a, so a no, when you wrong Wait, exothermic reaction. Do uh, you think that's hot enough to melt the plastic? It, it is. is. It's burning it. Yeah, it did yesterday. Oh, mm. what? Burn the table. <laughs> no, it was fine. So now it's at 155.6. So it went down a little bit. It's still going up. Oh, it was like a hundred. <laughs> It was 175 earlier, so definitely a strong exothermic reaction. So, in review, we've got physical changes that yeah, put the snow on it. Don't change the molecule or the atoms or the chemical, but chemical changes. Remember, they're swapping atoms and making new substances. That.
All right, we tried this in class. I did it for 6G and 6B. And while the elephant toothpaste did come out, it wasn't as big as I expected. I'm new to this, I haven't done this very many times. So I'm gonna try acting, uh, adding a few more reactants. Let's add a little more. So we got about 100 and almost 150 milligrams of the 30% hydrogen peroxide. Let's put quite a bit of soap in there. A little food coloring. See if we can't get it to be just a little bigger. And this flask has a narrower neck. And I tried this one with 6B because the flask I used with 6G had a wider neck. So it, it didn't, I didn't expect it to go out as fast because of, what is it, Bernoulli's effect. Um, but it didn't, it didn't do much more and I added more. So now let's try adding a bit more. Let's see if it shoots. Well, it's still not having the spectacular effect I expected, but it is beautiful. I wanted it to shoot out, so maybe it has to be even narrower for it to shoot out. And, as we learned in class, this uh, chemical reaction, what we're getting in there, is reaching an exothermic reaction. It's reaching temperatures of 175 or more degrees Fahrenheit. Okay, so this is a little better. But not by much. Um, you know, the kids brought up devil's toothpaste, devil's toothpaste. Well, supposedly, I guess if you add enough 30% hydrogen peroxide and enough of the catalyst, which I'm using potassium iodide, and it's a 0.5 molar, maybe it needs to be a full molar, uh, it should shoot out. And I'm thinking because if you get a, a wide volume, like, like through a hose, water hose, if you make it go through a narrower part of it, it will shoot out. Maybe that's how it'll happen. So, didn't quite get as dramatic as I want it, but at least I had more of a reaction here, so I made more stuff.